The idea behind SDN is that network engineers should be able to use software to configure and intelligently control the network. By using SDN, network engineers are given the ability and flexibility to control their networks programmatically in order to accommodate rapidly changing environments. For example, let's say you work in a data center. In this data center, you need a lot of equipment to create a network. Servers, switches, bridges, load balancers, cables, etc. All of these devices are highly capable of making truly intelligent decisions within their individual capabilities. However, they require individual configurations on each of the devices. And if you need to make a change that affects multiple devices, then you need to manually make that change on each of these devices. In addition, making all of these devices work together perfectly can be a bit of a headache. For example, devices from different vendors might not work properly with each other. With SDN, however, the configuration, management, and communication of all these devices is standardized and centralized. Software-defined networking takes all of these devices and combines them in much the same way a computer combines internal hardware components. It does this by using what's called a software-defined network controller. An SDN controller functions a lot like a traditional desktop operating system. It's able to inventory hardware components in the network, gather network statistics, make routing decisions based on gathered data, and facilitate communication between devices from different vendors. It can also be used to make widespread configuration changes on just one device. In essence, it's sort of like an operating system for the network. For example, take our data center here. Let's say this data center suddenly gets an influx of user connections and it needs to spin up new virtual machines to handle the load. Or perhaps it needs to offload some of these connections to another data center. In a traditional networking environment, spinning up new VMs, routing connections to these VMs, and propagating these changes throughout the network could take too much time and users wouldn't be able to use their resources. With SDN, however, this influx of users is identified by the controller. The network administrator can then make configuration changes on the controller to redirect users to the new VMs. And because all these configurations are controlled at a central location, the controller, they're propagated out to the network almost instantaneously, allowing the users to have no interruption in their connections. When the influx of user connections returns to normal, the controller can then return the network to the state it was in before. One of the primary advantages to using an SDN controller is that it can also act autonomously in situations like this. For example, if the scenario occurs again, the controller can remember the actions that were taken and perform them automatically. So we have our controller right here. Remember, the controller itself is just a software platform that contains other applications. It's the network's operating system. The SDN architecture consists of three layers. In the middle, there's the control layer. This is where the controller resides. Above that is the application layer. This is where various applications reside. One of these could be an app that creates a network map of all the devices in your network. Another one could be a load balancer that stops and starts VMs as resource use increases. The application layer and these various apps communicate with the control layer through what's called the northbound interface. These are sometimes called northbound APIs. Below the control layer is the physical layer. This is where the physical networking devices reside. Even though it's called the physical layer, it's also where the virtual networking devices reside. The physical layer communicates to the control layer through the southbound interface. The individual networking devices use southbound APIs to communicate with the control plane and vice versa. Understand that this control layer, the control plane, removes that control plane from the physical networking devices. In traditional networks, each of these devices would have an integrated control plane located on the device. However, SDN removes this from the devices and creates a single control plane. That's it for this lesson.